Greetings YouTube, performance reviews where I give you the review from a technician's point of view. And today I'm going to be answering a very popular question, which is what is the strongest vacuum cleaner? And particularly, what is the strongest vacuum cleaner on the United States market? Now, Europe gets completely different vacuums than the United States because of our electricity. So we're only going to be answering this question for North America, and it probably will apply to Japan as well and parts of South America that have similar electricity. So longtime viewers of the channel, thank you for your subscription. If you're new, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. That helps us out a whole lot. Now, before we get started, and I have five vacuums out here. Some of you will have counted four, you miscounted. More on that later is when we're talking about the strongest suction, a lot of people interested in what's the strongest suction that somehow translate to what the best vacuum is. The best vacuum is not always the vacuum with the strongest suction. The best vacuum is what is most comfortable for you to use, empty, what filters to what you need in your allergy and your home needs, and what's going to clean your floor. And of course, handling is a big part of that. So you can have the strongest vacuum in the world, and if you can't lift the thing, not not going to help you out. Uh, so that that's a really important characteristic, and it's it's why when people are vacuum shopping, I tell always tell them, go to your local independent vacuum store and try the vacuum before you buy it. A lot of times these stores have showrooms that are set up well. Not all of them. I have also told people that in their, well, their local vacuum store hasn't been very good. So definitely take a look at the reviews so you know your expectations when you go in there. Now, I've gathered three very strong portable vacuums that I've tested over the years. I know these to be uh, some of the strongest vacuums out there. I've also gathered a Dyson because a lot of people are going to ask about Dyson and they've done a tremendous amount of advertising. And I have video reviews on this Dyson. I have technical breakdowns and all sorts of stuff. Definitely check that out if you want to know in detail that. So I have a Dyson UP20. It is what it is. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and check the suction of the Dyson first. And then we'll move on to some of the portables. And then at the end, I will show you the strongest vacuum. Now, first of all, because so many people drink the Dyson Kool-Aid, I just want to show you that this is a clean filter and a freshly clean cyclone. Uh, if you aren't aware, these cyclones build up with dirt, and as they get too old or if they haven't been serviced, they reduce suction. So I just want to show that that's nice and clean. We're going to go ahead and test the Dyson in uh, sealed vacuum and working vacuum. And for those uninitiated with the channel, I have a whole video on working vacuum. I'm really not trying to do self-promotion here, but there are some things if you need to know those technical deep dives. I do have videos on those. Um, but... To sum it up, working vacuum is a great way to determine both airflow and practical suction together, and it's something that's used to test central vacuums. This gizmo is not a homemade gizmo. This is something that's actually commercially available that we use to test central vacuum. So at a mile above sea level, we're getting about 38, 39 inches working and about 90 sealed. That's not too shabby uh, for a machine like this. And of course, those numbers will be greatly diminished the first room you clean with this being a bagless machine. Next up, I have a Henry 160. 50 inches working and 75 sealed is pretty darn good. Definitely better than the Dyson. And for those of you not aware, Henry's are hard floor area rig machines. They have been available in the United States for a very long time. Uh, but for some reason, they're not as popular. Uh, and being the only true British machine that we get, uh, for those of you who don't know, the Dyson was actually made in Malaysia by children. Um, another thing about the Henry I want to show is the Henry's bag is about half full. There's a lot of heft in there, and it hasn't lost suction. Next up, I have a German-made Miele. Miele makes appliances and vacuums. Excellent, excellent machine. This is their top of the line. This is a C3, and not just the C3, this is the Brilliant. So this is the best of the best that Mila sells. However, we can do the same test with any other lineup. All of their lineup uses the same motor. Now this machine gets 50, 51 inches of working vacuum and about 90 plus sealed. That will be closer to 100 at sea level. But again, power's a little diminished here when we are so high in the mountains. Now this should, machine should really need no introduction. This is the Chad of vacuum cleaners. This is the Linhouse HF6. 
If you don't know about this machine, you absolutely should. It's a great value and it's a badass vacuum cleaner. Let's see what kind of suction this gets. Now this machine gets about 50 to 55 inches working and we're getting about a little over 70, but not quite 75 inches sealed. So that's pretty darn good considering the price of this machine. This machine costs about half as much as the Mila did before it. All right, folks, let's see what the central vacuum gets. Well, you can see just like the Mila, this has a relief valve, but 90 to 95 inches of working vacuum is truly amazing. And it's getting over 120 sealed at a mile above sea level. Again, these are truly amazing numbers. So you guys wanted to know what the most powerful vacuum was. Well, that's a central vacuum and there's no denying it. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One, central vacuums tend to be rather unrestricted in terms of airflow. They have two inch pipe going right up to this valve. The other thing is because you're not carrying around your vacuum, the motor or motors in this case can be much larger than in a portable vacuum. They also have their dedicated circuit so they don't have a power restriction like a portable vacuum. So if you want the most powerful vacuum and the vacuum that tends to be the most maneuverable, you want a central vacuum. Now, if you're looking for the most powerful portable vacuum, like I started at the beginning of this video, you can look at one of the options I've given you. They're excellent. Uh, a notable contender that's not as powerful but is a fabulous vacuum would be SIBO. Uh, I do recommend SIBO as well. So check out my recommended list of vacuums if you're looking for a new vacuum in some way. Give this video a thumbs up if you can, and definitely follow our hashtag Central Vacuum Propaganda. And if you really want to help the channel out, check out the Patreon and or share this video. Have yourself a wonderful day.